I'm intrigued at your ideas about audiences, which I agree with, and, it, and the magic and what happens, uh -huh. and yeah. the comfort zone, which kills yeah. so much of the input. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with so much of that, and I see it dormant or dead. Now. Well, there, there's a formalization mm -hmm. of audiences. You, th you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, you know, the sidebars. You know, the the people who support the mechanism of theater, if you like, think that by getting subscriptions, by writing the right pamphlets and stuff like that. You can you can get this you know that that that'll make your audience. What can you do about it? You, I keep surprising them. I mean, the only way that you can do this stuff is to actually go into a room and and con people into coming and surprise them by what happens in the room. You, if you tell them what's going to happen in the room and they, they already know, then you know it's it's almost impossible to make it happen. Right. I think I don't know. I mean. Uh, the theater is where you go to discover things, I think. I mean, it's still the, most, the one valid reason I can have, find for going out as an audience member and trying to jump back into the bear pit. As so you a, can't make sense of, of the, seeds, the seeds of that idea were so strong and they were sown so well in the 70s and they really took roots. Well, but, but those seeds are really not well, burying you know, anything. Okay, anymore. well, yeah, but I, I, you want to, yeah, how long do you have? Okay, I, I went in 1985. Uh, <coughs> was the um, 100th anniversary of the rebellion. John Jarvis and I drove out to Batoche to be part of the rebellion there. We actually went over to Gordon Tatusis's family powwow because his uh, his family were having their 50th anniversary, and we got to go into a private powwow, which was all for, you know, the, the, maybe there were half a dozen white guys there and the rest were uh, Cree, I would think most of them, and all family members, and there'd be like maybe 500 people in the middle of a bush, and you just had to keep driving through this bush and through, you know, scrubland with little arrows staked in the land pointing in the right direction. And then from there we went to Rudy Weeb, in his acreage where um, uh, New West Press was having, they used to have these gatherings in the summertime where people talked about ideas and their work and stuff like that. And in the middle of this there was a guy called Trevor Brody who was an architect professor at the university who was talking about the boom and bust in the West, in the Western economy as seen in the architecture. Mm -hmm. And this just blew me out of the water. I mean, oh, God, this is fantastic. And what he showed was, this is the way buildings used to be. Then somebody had a new idea of how to make money, and their first job, he said, was to destroy all uh, memory of the uh, previous boom. And uh, finally, I understood Calgary. You know, when we were doing Maggie and Pierre in Calgary, which turned out to be a big hit. We thought it was a big risk, but we were playing in QR theater that uh, Theater Calgary had at that time. And during a matinee on a Saturday afternoon where Linda had to do two shows, she had to do a matinee show and an evening show. And during a matinee, some guy with a bulldozer decided to tear down the building next door. <laughs> now, any time during the week I would have understood this, but this was like, wealthy Alberta at a time of boom, and he was getting triple overtime to do this. It was a hell of a noise, and the audience was used to it, so it only bothered Linda for a little while, and she got into the groove, and it was one of her better shows. And at the end of the show, she pointed to the bulldozer, and the audience applauded the bulldozer as a co-performer of her show. <laughs> How okay. does it play so into... now we're back into this boom and bust thing, yeah. and I finally realized that this guy is onto something, that boom and bust may be part of our psyche here in a resource-based world, a resource-based world which is our economy, and isn't it interesting that maybe there's some kind of relationship between our economy and our culture, like maybe the cultural form of our economy should actually relate to that. And therefore, we're going to have a boom and bust in our cultural expression. So we have a uh, Robert Lepage, who was a lovely oil well over in this corner of the universe, but there's no use pretending he's a comedy Francaise right. because he's only going to be as good as his next ideas and his scheme to pull away on that. And we have one yellow rabbit who, you know, who are kind of a, an interesting 
niche market of you know maybe the diamonds up in northern Ontario. In Calgary, one in yellow, Calgary, yeah. one yellow rabbit, and they keep polishing their little diamonds, and they still you know can keep those going, and maybe that is our real cultural expression, and maybe we should celebrate that and accept the fact that it's going to be cyclical. It's going to look like death. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a mine that has been dug out, or people think it's been dug out, and miners who haven't found the next thing look as bad as actors improving a show that hasn't found its theme yet. You know. <laughs> so you know maybe that's a rationalization on my part. Yeah. Maybe it's a romanticization, but I think. No, I, you know, my logic, my old, you know, university trained logic tells me that you cannot dissociate a culture, a, you know, a literary, theatrical culture culture from its economic culture. And do they go parallel, boom and bust, or do they Oh, oppose? no, they can, they can be at odds because, you know, a, a human oil well isn't necessarily dependent on money. Right. You know, like it could be out of desperation. Maybe the next, you know, we were out of desperation. It wasn't because, you know, uh, it wasn't because there was a bunch of money around that we, we started mm -hmm. to make plays. We, you know, it was because there wasn't any money around. We were forced into hanging together to make a play. So the only, the, we're the only more like a kind of wildcat <laughs> organization out of Calgary going off into the middle of nowhere to try and strike something that the big companies haven't bought into or you know, control. Right. 